We have multiple solar storms, one of which might be partially Earth-directed, some fast solar wind, and in the new year, it's time to check in at the Red Planet. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Happy New Year, everybody. Space weather's been a bit on the calm side since the New Year started, and, well, as we take a look at our front side sun, there's been a little bit of a change, but it's still pretty calm overall. We do have a small coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth's strike zone here over the next couple days, and could give us a small pocket of fast solar wind. And if you take a look at the region in and around that coronal hole, you'll notice there's a like a big, long filament. And on the 8th, whoosh, you can see it kind of lift off, and that shoots a solar storm that's kind of going earthward. But then if you continue watching it, there's a second part that just kind of continues afterward and it launches. It's a little bit westward and it launches right after the first one. So now we have kind of these two solar storms that are pushing themselves out a little bit westward of Earth. But it looks like that first one might be able to graze Earth in and around the 12th. We're kind of looking at the models and if there's any possibility, it's remote. And it's going to be near the time that this coronal hole is also sending us that fast solar wind. So we might get a little bit of enhancement from that. So roar photographers at high latitudes, you might actually be in for a little bit more of a show than you might have thought from this weak coronal hole here. So that's a good thing. But sadly, as we continue to look at the rest of the disk, there's not a lot going on. We're back to a spotless sun and that means the solar flux has dropped a little bit. We do see a small region that's beginning to kind of emerge here on the east limb in, in, in uh, Earth's view. But that's not really anything manifesting as of yet, so we're going to keep an eye on it. Now, as we switch to our far-sided sun, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. You can see back on the 8th, you can see that uh, solar storm launch in the south. That was that big filament eruption. That's the one that if there is a chance that it's Earth-directed at all, that's going to be the one that will hit us. Meanwhile, we also see that region cut kind of as it rotates into uh, about the middle of Stereo's view in the south. You can see that small region beginning to to emerge. It's not a sunspot yet. If it does, it will be called region 2674, but we'll continue to watch it and see if uh, if it continues developing. Luckily, it is boosting the solar flux just a little bit. We're still in the mid-70s, and it looks like that's going to continue over the next week or so, and we're just hoping that we're going to get more regions uh, as, uh, you know, as the days pass, but as you can tell, it's pretty bland, even in Stereo's view. We also do have a bigger coronal hole that's going to be rotating early Earth side here in the next couple days, and it could give us a decent solar storm starting around mm, maybe next week, maybe about uh, 10 days or so. It could give us some decent fast solar wind, and that might actually bump us up to active conditions, but we'll have to, to wait on that and see once it rotates into Earth view. And outside of that, we're just going to kind of hang on and hope that the sun continues to wake up. Now, switching to coronagraphs, these are the images from the LASCO instrument aboard the SOHO spacecraft, which is an Earthview coronagraph. Now, on this side, we've got the red raw intensity images, but we're not going to focus on those. We're actually going to focus on the difference images, which basically enhance the details so we can see them better. And if you look on the 8th, wham, right there, coming out of the west part of the sun, you can see that's that first uh, solar storm that was launched. And then just shortly thereafter, after that pretty neck kind of moves off. You can actually see yet another kind of loop coming off to the south. That's the second part of that eruption coming out. So there's like a two-parter that kind of moves out a little bit to the west of Earth, but also maybe just grazing Earth as it'll move on by right around the 12th. Now, also, you see something moving off to the north. That is yet another solar storm. So we've actually had three, in a sense, three different solar storms being launched. But this slow-moving one, that looks like it's a far-sighted eruption. So that one's not going to be anything close to coming towards Earth. And we just have these other two that might might give us a little bit of an enhancement of that fast solar wind when it comes around the 11th or the 12th. And now for your Martian Minute. It's been a couple months since we checked in at the Red Planet, and luckily we are beginning to move out of winter and soon we'll be moving into springtime for the Northern Hemisphere. And this means a lot of the dust storms we've been seeing, especially those back in November, are beginning to die down. 
Now, if we look back at November, you can see we had quite a bit of dust storms in the Northern Hemisphere, especially all over the plains of Acidalia. We had it down in the Meridian and Planum, and even cleared down into Hesperia near Gale Crater, where Curiosity is. Now, as time moved on, even in the beginning of December, we would still get some dust-ups near Elysian Planitia, where InSight is, and even in Syrtis Major, where Jezero Crater is. Now, if you recall, Jezero Crater is where the Perseverance rover is going to be landing, so we want to make sure that that region is clear in time for the rover to land. Now, of course, Mars 2020 is really getting close now. Its rendezvous with Mars is, geez, just in the next month. As a matter of fact, Mars 2020 is still slated to land on February 18th, so that's just not much time to go, right? So we really want these dust storms to start dying down. And luckily, as of the beginning of January, we're getting a few dust ups still in the Northern Hemisphere, but they're getting fewer and further between. The last one we saw was really near Elysian Planitia, and and that's, of course, where InSight is, but it really hasn't been all that bad. And again, these are going to continue to, to settle down over time. And luckily, Jezero Crater looks like it's all in the clear. And right now, Ingale Crater, which is near the equator, and it's the location of Curiosity Rover, it's still pretty much winter there, with a high of minus 5 Celsius, and the low is a chilly minus 73. And if you're wondering whether or not Starman is going to be anywhere near Mars when Mars 2020 lands in Jezero Crater with Perseverance rover and Ingenuity helicopter, well, I hate to say it, but we're out of luck. Starman actually made his closest approach to Mars back in October of this past year, and ever since then has been quickly moving away from it. In fact, as of about December of this year, Starman has been actually falling back to Earth like the man who fell to Earth. Well, let, let's hope not. Let's hope he stays in orbit. But what that means, of course, is that when Mars 2020 does land, it looks like Starman and us are going to have to be watching the whole thing from a distance. In fact, Starman is going to be hanging out pretty close to Earth orbit easily until April, when then he slowly will begin to make his way away from us again. And sadly, we won't be able to see him and his cute little Tesla Roadster until about October of 2023. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being on the 13th. So you night sky watchers, now's a great time to catch those dim objects in the sky. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the impact from that fast solar wind. It's just a pocket of fast solar wind from a small coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days. But it might be enhanced by those two solar storms that are definitely moving west of Earth, but they could graze us just a tad and enhance the impact of that fast solar wind. So at high latitude, snow is expecting unsettled conditions, but up to about a 25% chance of a major storm for the next couple days. Now, mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 15% chance of active conditions over the next couple days until about the 13th or so, when things really should begin to start settling back down, and we should continue to move into quiet uh, times as we get closer to the weekend. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you do have a decent chance from getting some aurora. Mid-latitudes, it's much more of a fleeting chance, so I don't get too excited, and only if you're very dedicated should you bother to go out and chase. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is back to being in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, so this means there's no risk for radio blackouts, and this should make GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. Your GPS reception should be pretty top-notch. Now, luckily, we are managing to hold on to the mid-70s for solar flux. Part of that is due to a new region that's emerging on uh, in Earth view. This could be region 20. 2796 if it continues to emerge and becomes an actual sunspot. So we're watching it very closely. And if that happens, these solar flux numbers might even rise a little bit. But meanwhile, we're staying in the marginal range for radio propagation on Earth's day side. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, just hang in there. We're searching for new sunspots and we're begging the sun to kind of wake up a little bit more. So hopefully that will happen soon. Now also, because we're still climbing out of solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is a bit more intense 
and we'd like it to be, so you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is, well, trying to get a little bit exciting. We do have a couple of solar storms that are moving pretty much west of Earth, but they could graze Earth right about the same time we're expecting a small pocket of fast solar wind. So that could enhance the impact at Earth just a little bit. So aurora photographers, especially at high latitudes, you could be getting a decent show. Now aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, only if you're really dedicated should you chase. But if you get anything, it's probably going to be right around the 11th or the 12th, so just be aware of that. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, the news isn't so great for you right now. We're back to a spotless sun again, except for that one region that we're paying attention to, and if it actually emerges as a sunspot, it'll be, re it'll be region 2796, so we're going to keep an eye on it, and maybe that'll boost that solar flux up just a little bit. Luckily, it looks like we are going to continue hanging on to marginal radio propagation easily for this week and possibly into next week, but we sure don't see any sunspots on the horizon right now, so you're just going to have to hang in there. Now, you GPS users, well, you know, the news is a little bit mixed, but pretty good for you overall. Your dayside reception should be really top-notch because we don't have any sunspots or any flare noise for you, but then on top of that, we do have a little bit of chance for some aurora and a little bit of mess from the solar storm, especially on Earth's night side. So as long as you stay away from aurora and away from those dawn dust terminators, your GPS reception should be pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.